Hello everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Now I have to tell you guys, I just got back from a trip. I was visiting Florida with the hopes of seeing one of my all-time favorite animals. This reptile is a very powerful predator. You might mistake it for a floating log and it happens to be one of the largest reptiles in the United States. Today, we're talking all about the American alligator. Let's get into it. As we just said, American alligators are one of the largest reptiles in the United States. They can be found throughout the southeastern part of the country, primarily in and around wetlands. Wetlands include places like swamps and streams, lakes and ponds. We usually find American alligators in fresh water, but they can also be found in brackish water, like where fresh water and salt water meet. American alligators are one of only two species of alligators, the other being the Chinese alligator, which is much smaller and much more endangered. Both American alligators and Chinese alligators belong to a larger group of reptiles called crocodilians. Crocodilians include a whole bunch of different species, including crocodiles, caimans, gharials, and false gharials. All crocodilians are related, so they do have a lot of stuff in common. But two crocodilians that very commonly get confused are alligators and crocodiles. So let's spend a couple minutes here talking about just how we could tell them apart, because there are a couple ways. One way you can tell alligators and crocodiles apart is by looking at their snout shape. Alligators tend to have a more U-shaped snout, while crocodiles tend to have more of a pointed V-shaped snout. Another way that you can tell them apart is by looking at their teeth. Alligators, when they close their mouth, many of their bottom teeth get hidden behind their top teeth. Crocodiles, on the other hand, we say have a toothy smile. We can see all their top teeth and their bottom teeth. Another great way to tell them apart is to look at where they live. We did mention before that alligators typically spend time in fresh water, whereas many crocodiles spend time in salt water. We mentioned before that there's only two species of alligators. There's more than 20 species of crocodiles, so much more diversity among the crocodiles. All right, enough about crocodiles. Let's get back to our American alligators. American alligators, as we mentioned before, are some of the largest reptiles in the United States. Males are larger than females. A large male can grow as long as 15 feet long and weigh over a thousand pounds. However, they more so average between five and 600 pounds and about 10 to 12 feet long, which is still twice as long as I am, so that's still pretty big. Like all crocodiles, American alligators are carnivores. They're meat eaters. They're very powerful predators that feed on just about any type of animal that lives around them. However, exactly what they're eating does depend on a couple things. It depends on the size of the alligator. A bigger alligator can catch and eat bigger food. It depends on their range, where they live, because the food that's available in Florida might be different than the food that's available in Louisiana. It also depends on the time of year for a couple reasons. Other animals, the alligators prey, their activity level might change throughout the year. And the alligator's activity might also change throughout the year. Many American alligators enter a phase called brumation during the winter months. This is kind of like hibernation, but for cold-blooded animals like reptiles. When reptiles become dormant or inactive for the winter, we call it brumation. During the winter when alligators are brumating, the amount of food that they eat goes way down and they might not even eat at all. However, during the warmer months, they are definitely on the search for food. Smaller alligators, who we said will be eating smaller food, will be eating things like fish, frogs, large bugs, small birds, other small animals that are around the wetland. 
Larger alligators, on the other hand, can eat some pretty large food. They're often eating things like large fish, or ducks, turtles, snakes, raccoons, any other small or large animal that happens to get a little bit too close to the wetland where they might be lurking. American alligators are able to sneak up on all of this prey using incredible camouflage. They have those dark scales on their back, which underneath actually have a protective layer of bone called an osteoderm. We're going to come back to that. But that brown layer of scales on top allows them to look just like a floating log and allows them to ambush their prey. Their eyes nose, and ears are on the top of their head. That way they can see, smell, and breathe, and hear all while most of their body is hidden beneath the water. Once they've snuck up on their prey, they've ambushed them. They use their incredibly strong bite force and their very sharp teeth to kind of make it a done deal. American alligators will lose and replace their teeth constantly throughout their life as their teeth get worn down or damaged or fall out. This might sound like another predator you know, perhaps maybe a shark. So now we know that American alligators are powerful predators, but do they have any predators? Well, a gigantic 15 foot long alligator, probably not so much. Alligators are much more vulnerable to predators when they're young. They have to be on the lookout for things like birds, especially things like herons, snakes, large fish, and even other alligators. We mentioned before that alligators had that layer of bone underneath their scale that we call an osteoderm. That plus their camouflage are going to be the two ways that they try their very hardest to avoid being gobbled up by a predator. American alligators are fairly social. They'll often be seen in the same area basking or searching for food. However, things change a little bit during the breeding season. Males get a little more territorial and they announce themselves to the rest of the alligators using a sound called bellowing. They get low in the water. They make a rumbling sound that is so loud and deep that it makes the water above them do a dance. The females can tell how big and strong and healthy a male is just by listening to their bellows. Once a female has been impressed and after breeding, she will eventually build a nest and lay her eggs. Something really unusual for reptiles that American alligators and other crocodilians do is they actually stick around after they lay their eggs. They stay, they protect the nest, and when their eggs start to hatch, the female will make sure that they're safe. She'll even carry them sometimes to an area that's a little bit safer, usually in some shallow, slow moving water, and she'll carry them there in her mouth. Now this may look a little dangerous, but this is the safest way for her to move them from one place to another, because remember, we did say that those young alligators have some predators. If those alligators are able to grow and get stronger and learn how to hunt, they could live to be 50 years old. While American alligators may get a reputation as a big bad predator, scientists do consider them to be a keystone species. A keystone species is an organism whose presence is so important that if their population went down or disappeared, it would change the entire ecosystem and make it harder for other organisms to survive. American alligators are considered a keystone species because of the holes that they make in the wetlands. American alligators will kind of dig out these muddy holes and will use that space to wallow, to kind of settle in and cool off in some water. They'll use it as a space to lure in prey or even as an available space to mate. During the times of year where there's not as much water in the wetland, those holes stay filled up with water and create a really important environment for all sorts of different species in the wetlands. They're also important because when they're making those holes and they're digging out all the dirt, that creates these mounds in the wetlands that creates a nice dry space that other animals can use to bask or make their nest or anything like that. They're also very important predators, keeping the population of many different species in check. 
So we know American alligators are highly important in their environment, but unfortunately, they are facing some threats in the wild. One of the biggest threats that they're facing is the destruction of their wetland environment. The water that they rely on for camouflage while they're hunting, that water is being diverted, it's being moved as we build new cities and farms. They also face threats like hunting and invasive species coming into their habitat, throwing the environment out of balance. So even though American alligators might get a bad reputation, it is important that we all do our part to protect American alligators. And we can do that by protecting our wetlands, protecting our water sources. That's a great way to protect alligators and a ton of other aquatic and semi-aquatic animals. You can help protect your local water source by using less water. Take shorter showers, turn the water off when you're not using it, plant native plants in your garden that require less water. And now that we know that there's many ways that we can protect American alligators, let's go ahead and get wrapped up. Thank you so much for joining me today for another amazing adventure. If you'd like to do some quizzes, activities, projects, even more, be sure to visit that link below and we'll see you at our next adventure. Bye.